come here and have a seat because I don't want the same thing um, that happened this morning to happen today. I'm, I'm trying to keep up with the time. Um, this morning we had to go over by around about 10 minutes, but I don't want that. Um, so we're starting right now and we should be finishing up by 6 p.m. Okay? So everybody please come and have a seat and you can go and have refreshments at any moment. Not everybody all at once. Please don't leave the space empty. Um, but let's start this event. My name is Maggie Little. I am the scholarship coordinator. Um, and I made a very bad joke this morning. Let's see if it works now. You may call me scholarships. Say it doesn't work. <laughs> so I'll change it. I just I'm not gonna use that anymore. Um, Somehow I like to move around, but my voice is not very loud, so let's see if this works. Does it work? No. Can you hear me? Yes? yes. Okay. Um, so today we're here. Uh, first of all, let me thank you all for being here. This is great. It's amazing to see that so many of you signed up for this event and came today, even though there's no class schedule. So basically, on your day off, you are here. That's awesome. Let's clap for you. Okay. Um, and today we're going to learn about a lot of different things here, but everything that has to do with scholarships. And we're going to learn about different resources that as a host of student, you might be eligible for, and you may qualify for, and you can put your application. Um, we're all also going to learn about um, how to build your scholarship package, and that may be good for applying not only to internal scholarships, but, but to external scholarships as well. Um, we're also going to show you how to navigate the scholarship system um, so that you can put in your applications to the internal scholarships that we offer here. Every semester we offer different scholarships, um, which we call internal. Those are the ones that we at hostels offer for our students. So for as long as you are a registered student, you can apply for those. I think somebody has an announcement. Huh? Somebody saying that my mic is too low, they cannot hear me. Can you all hear me here? You're fine? I don't. Yes? I don't. Okay, I don't. so it's just people saying stuff there. I don't. Front. I don't. No? Oh, for the camera. That's what it is. So I'll have to, to maybe, is this a little better there? Yeah. Yes? yes? Okay. Um, I'll, you'll also learn how to navigate the scholarship system, and you will learn about different external scholarships that you can you may qualify for, and you are absolutely encouraged to apply to. Um, so let's start with the scholarship system. And I'll tell you a little bit, even though I mentioned that before, internal scholarships are those opportunities that we offer here for our students. And as long as you're a host student, you can apply for those, okay? Every semester we offer different opportunities. Um, and the ones that we're going to be offering this fall semester, they are already open. So if you haven't checked the system, you should start doing that now and applying. We have about two months to put in the application, so they all close by mid-November, okay? Um, question, how many of you have put in an application for any OSTO scholarship before? Okay, a couple of hands up, good. Um, how many of you have created a profile in the system? Good. A couple of you as well. Well, I'm very happy to see that only a few of you have done that because today, this is what it is for. For you to learn how to navigate the system, how to create your profile, how to create applications for internal scholarships. This is the scholarship system. This is how it looks. If we can go back to the hostess website, the homepage. How many of you are familiarized with that, with the hostess website? Everyone, good. So, from the hostess website, if you go to login to, which is the same step, these are the same steps that you follow when you want to access your hostess email account, QA first, and everything else. Right? So if you go here on the student side, you scroll down all the way to where it says scholarships and grants. Click there. It shows you this page, scholarships and grants. Scroll down a little again and click on this link. Right here. And that takes you to the scholarship page. This is how it looks. So once you access this page, the system automatically shows you the internal scholarships. These are all internal. And you know that they are open because you can see the deadline here. This is when they close. That means this is the very last day that you have to put in an application if you want to be considered for one of those scholarships. Okay? Now, here you can also find information about external scholarships. For you to find the external scholarships on, the, on this um, 
side. You go where it says opportunities, click on external, and it shows you the external opportunities. All of these are open right now, and you can you know that because it says vetted, which is going to take you to their website. Something very important about the external scholarships is that we at Hostos don't manage those. Those are outside opportunities. Different organizations from outside of Hostos create those opportunities, and they offer them. They send us the information, we promote them, promote them around here, and we assist you in the application process. But I don't know um, that you have put an application to any one of those scholarships unless you let me know, because I don't manage the, that system. Um, but if you put in an application to any internal scholarship, then I can tell you everything about that. I manage that system completely. If you don't know whether a recommendation letter made it, made it in, you can come and ask me. Um, if you don't know whether you submitted your application or it's still undrafted mode, you can ask me and I'll let you know everything about it, okay? But for the external ones, you do have to let me know. Once you click on visit, what, what that does is it takes you to that particular scholarship website, which is a completely different system than, than what we use here. And then you find all the information there, you can see that one, um, about that particular scholarship. It's going to give you the description, the criteria, and all that you need to do to know to put in your application. Good? Questions so far? No? Yes. Okay, so he's asking about the number of scholarships that, that we give away. Um, you mean in term, with external ones? Okay, so it depends. For the external ones, once you visit the website, it's going to tell you how many opportunities, how many awards, actually, this opportunity is offering. If the particular opportunity is only, I believe the first one is only offering one award, so only one person will receive that one. Um, some other ones offered 10, three, two, it depends. You have to make sure that you read the criteria, the description for every scholarship, and that you understand the requirements and all the information that is in it. But usually that kind of information you can find in the description. Any more questions? Um, Part-time students, I don't really see those very much. Um, but the external ones, you can definitely find anything. There's a lot of different external opportunities. Um, for the internal ones, we don't have any opportunity that is for um, part-time students. But we do have some um, emergency funds which have a complete different criteria. So we can talk more about that. We're not going to go in detail into those specific um, scholarships. Now, but at any moment, if you have questions, you can contact me. Um, by the way, if you haven't received prior to this event, if you haven't received any email from me, then at least for, about, for information about this event, I'm sure that you have received more than one email from me. So you must have all my information already. And in all of this documents here, you can also find this whole table has all of my information, okay? And this other table here is for the Leadership Academy. Um, we have the director of the Leadership Academy here, and he's going to be presenting later on. So he's going to explain all of that to you in a couple of minutes, okay? No more questions for now. I'll continue, and then we ask more questions. Something very important about the, the scholarship system. If you want to apply for the internal scholarships, you need to create a profile. And before you can create the profile, you have to sign in. For that, you, what do you think you need? Post ID, which one? Email, username, and password. Is that the same username and password that you use for CUNY first? Blackboard? No. So you have to know that it is separate. Not the same username and password that you use for um, to log into Blackboard or CUNY first, but your email account, not the whole email account either, um, only the username and the same password. And that's how you access the system. Is there any volunteer who would like to come and try signing up in the system? But you have to make sure that you have access to your email account. You do? Okay. Oh, good. What's your name? Can I just be more potential? 
and then you should be able to complete all of this information. There you go. It's very basic. Um, it's your name, last name, contact information. Um, then you um, may answer information about owners and activities, if you have um, received any kind of uh, certificate of recognition, um, if you have been awarded, um, recognized for something outstanding that you did even here in school, and it doesn't have to be here at OSOS only, it could be from somewhere else. But we know that the most recent events count uh, better than the past ones, okay? Then here you have this part in which you have to enter your personal statement. That is very important. What is a personal statement? What do you enter there? What kind of information do you think? The reason for applying and here, here. Your interest. Your goals. Anything else? Yes, that's very good. That's exactly what you enter there. So you want to talk, this is your opportunity to talk about yourself, to make yourself stand out. Um, you don't have to enter your name again and start your personal statement by saying, my name is so-and-so. Because you have already entered that information previously in the application, right? So you can just talk about your story. Um, what is it that you're doing here right now? What do you plan to do in the future? Um, what motivates you to continue going? What challenges have you faced or, or are you facing right now? How you have overcome those challenges? That's what you want to talk about and you want to create an impression um, on the reader, okay? And the last part is for you to just sign by writing your name, date, and then finish and submit. At any moment, if you want to update your application, then you can also do that. It's going to stay somewhere around here. Um, update, um, so you can do that. Also very important that I didn't mention it's that a lot of the scholarships, whether internal or external, require um, community service experience and extracurricular um, activities, engagement. So it will be, if you don't have a lot of that right now in your resume, it will be very good for you to start engaging in that, okay? To start thinking about it. And later on, as I said before, we're going to have Mr. Jason Lipton, who's going to be presenting about different um, community service engagement activities that you may Participate. Question here. Um, so I'm not sure that I am understanding your question very good, but I'm going to paraphrase. You said, how many times can you open the system or create the profile? Would it be the profile you only create once, and once you submit the profile, you can always go back to it and update the information. So let's say that you don't feel comfortable with the first personal statement that you enter and you want to change some of that information, you can update. Let's say that right now you don't have any community service experience, so you left that blank, but then later on you have um, collected a lot of that experience and you want to enter your community service engagement, then you go back and update, okay? Is there a limit on the number of scholarships that you can apply for? That's the question around here. Um, no, you can apply to all those scholarships that you meet the criteria for and that you have an interest in, okay? So you just have to make sure that you read very carefully on the criteria. And the same applies for external scholarships. If you find that in the booklet that I showed you before, that you may qualify for 40 of all the scholarships that you find there, and you feel that you have the time and energy to put the application, which I don't think anybody has here, um, to put the application to 40 of those scholarships and write 40 essays, um, then you can do that. Apply to all of those, but you know what it means. It takes time and energy and a lot of different things. And that's um, after you have completed your profile, then you're ready to start applying for um, the internal scholarships. But before you do that, the system is not going to allow you to, okay? It's not going to open up. Um, so your first step right now, if you want to participate, uh, put in an application for the internal scholarships, is to create your profile. Some basic um, requirements for the internal scholarships is to have a minimum of 2.5 GPA and um, 12th grade is completed. So that means that basically before you are able to put in an application, you need to have completed your first semester at Hostos as a full-time student. 
Um, if that's not the case for some of the people here, then it is also, it is still great that you're here today because you want to go ahead of the game. This is your, your first semester here, then you get ready for the spring semester when you're gonna be ready to start applying for scholarships. If you complete your profile right now and you take all of the steps, you will be ready next semester. You don't have to worry about them. this now. Okay? Um, and I am going to, so a little bit, well, I have a message here, I'm so sorry. Okay, so I have a PowerPoint presentation, but uh, that's a little long. I don't want to take too much time, um, which I want. But the PowerPoint presentation has basically the same information that we have in this um, scholarship package. And this is about how to put together your scholarship package. Um, this has information about the letter of recommendation, who to ask the letter of recommendation to, um, what kind of information um, you need your recommenders to include in your letters, um, also information about your personal statement, how to develop that personal statement, what kind of information you need to include in that personal statement, um, as well as the um, information about community service, what is it exactly that it means that, that this organization is made by community service. Because I have mentioned this word by a lot of times already here. So you, some of you may be asking, wondering, what is that? How do you do that? Um, well, I'm just volunteered by uh, the homeless. Okay. okay. You guys heard me, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's a gift. <laughs> and you know, you can generally do even community service in your church, even when you volunteer in church or there's an elected official in your neighborhood, a assemblyman, and you're handing out flyers for him. Uh, that's community service. Perhaps they're um, organizing the tenants in your building. You hand out flyers for that, door knocking. All of that is community service. Exactly, and and it's not very hard to, to go out there and do community service. And the good thing about Hostess Community College is that we have the, the Student Leadership Academy, which creates this events for you and, and allows you to go out there and, and put in some of your time, volunteer some of your time. Um, and it, it doesn't really take a lot. It may sound the way that when we talk about community service, it may sound like it is a lot of work. Um, but basically you can go, if you have one hour of your time, one day of the week, you can just volunteer that time. And that counts. Every little piece counts. Okay? Um, questions so far? No, you don't have questions for me? Well, um, you have all of my information here in this scholarship package document, all the way in the back at the end. You will also have my information on the bigger book that I have, the scholarship, the external scholarship one. Here, the front, um, yes, right in the front, at the bottom, there's my information. This table has a lot of information about me as well, and my cards. So take all of that and feel free to contact me for anything that you need. Um, and you can decide whether you want to email me, call me, come by, whichever you prefer. Question here? Okay, so for some of the, the internal scholarships that we have here, her question is, what if you want to apply for a scholarship but you're not planning to stay here? Let's say maybe you're graduating at the end of the semester. Um, for some of the internal scholarships, unless the description says that this money is going to go towards tuition strictly, then you're not gonna see any of that money in your hands. But some other scholarships, you receive a check for them. So basically you decide, you, you can save it and use it wherever you go. Um, with external scholarships, the same happens. Um, and they can tell you, they, go, they will tell you in the description criteria, this is how you will receive the money, so make sure you take the steps. They may say, we are going to mail you a check to your home address, we are going to send the money to your school, whichever school that might be, so you send all the information of that school and they send the money back. Okay? More questions? And that's when this booklet comes into play. Um, does everybody have a copy of this? 
If not, then at the end you will also be receiving a copy. This will answer your question. He's asking if we can share any kind of information that would make him write a, a stronger personal statement of the anniversary. Um, just know that every scholarship is different and even though a lot of scholarships may ask you to write an essay um, a, as a personal statement, a personal statement essay, um, some others may give you a very specific topic which might be a historical topic or a science topic and you have to write an essay based on the topic that they gave you, okay? But this booklet for sure has a lot of information about that, how to put together your scholarship package and if you still feel that you need more information, more if you still have some questions, you can always contact me. Okay, so we continue. I'm going now to introduce our president of the Student Government Association here at Hostess Community College, Ms. Denise Herrera. Um, and she um, the student government here always offers a, uh, offers a scholarship. Every semester they offer a scholarship for students. So she's going to be presenting about that opportunity that they create for you guys. Pay attention. Hi, good afternoon everybody. My name is Denise Herrera. Um, I would like to introduce my executive secretary. Kelvin Pineda. Um, so SGA organizes cultural, educational, and social activities within for the student body um, every, every semester actually. Um, we create scholarships um, for students, so we get a specific budget for a specific amount of students. And um, last semester we had a merit scholarship, which the requirements were to have a 3.0 GPA and to write an essay. Um, and some questions can vary, so it is a short essay. Um, sometimes we have need-based scholarships as well. And the only thing that you have to do is have like a GPA between 2.5 to 2.7 and show that you go tuition. So like a fine, go to financial aid and give us that proof. If not, how do we know if you actually owe tuition? Um, the merit-based scholarship is earned through academic, athletic, or artistic achievements. Um, and the need-based, like I said, is through financial aid. This year we haven't, um, sat down with the scholarship committee and put together what kind of scholarships we're gonna make. So, but we would just be on the lookout in our webpage and our Instagram, which is SGA Hostos, or come to the fifth floor and ask us um, if the scholarship is open yet, but definitely be aware and go around campus and see the flyers, because we don't know if we're gonna have a need base or a marriage scholarship or together. But the maximum is always 500. Any questions? Um, well, it depends on our budget. Um, so last year we only um, selected 20 recipients, but it's actually very competitive. We received about 50 um, applications. So it keeps increasing, and one of our biggest problems is the visibility in this campus. How can we communicate the resources we have for you students? So. Um, another thing I actually want to point out is um, somebody mentioned about community service. You guys can actually come and do community service with us as well when we do um, events. So it'd be great if you guys could like come help out serve food, um, registration, you know, stuff like that. So if you guys want to save a date, um, next Tuesday, September 25th, we're going to have an importance of voting panel discussion with the professor from Crim um, John Jay of Crim Criminal Justice. And we're going to emphasize how important voting is, actually. It's going to be from 3.30 to 5 p.m. in the student lounge at the C building. So if you guys are interested in volunteering with us, that would be great. And then you could add that to your extracurriculars as well. Anything else? Um, I have another, um, one of my other members, her name is Destiny. I just want to give her a shout out. But thank you. And Stefan, he's my senator as well. Thank you so much, Denise, and um, the, um, the S all the SGA members. Stefan, you can come back. You know that you're going to be presenting. Have a seat here. Um, and thank you so much for your presentation. 
And uh, do you have any questions about the SGA scholarships? No? Not for now? Okay, good. So we're going to continue with um, Ms. Karina Castro. She is the coordinator for the honors program here at Hostos Community College, and she will tell you all the benefits about this program. Ready? Um, my name is Karina Castro. I'm the Honors Program Coordinator here at Hostess Community College. Um, the program is ran by two faculty members, Professor uh, Cynthia Jones from the English Department and Professor Ernest Yalama from the History Department. Uh, so our program is about, um, it's really for high, um, high, sorry, um, high achieving students. It's for students who have a 3.2 GPA or above. And it's really a support program to really connect students with their academia as well as their extracurricular on campus. Uh, and what we do is, so first you have to apply for the program. We do have an online application. You have to submit a personal statement as well as two recommendation letters. Once you get accepted into the program, we then provide you with support with a mentor who's normally a faculty member here on campus. Um, and that provides, and I, I don't know if it was mentioned earlier, but um, with your scholarships, often they require recommendation letters. And the honors program actually provides that opportunity for you to receive that because through our honors courses, they are smaller courses. So there's about 18 students enrolled per course, and that really provides the opportunity for you to connect with the faculty member as well as the students in the course. All right. Um, some other things that we do within our program, we also incorporate community service, which we collaborate with SLA. Uh, student Leadership student leadership Academy, which you'll hear more about. And um, we also provide extracurricular activities and things like that. So it's a really good opportunity for students who are looking for more experience connecting to the campus um, and other students who are like-minded like you. And again, you need a 3.2 GPA or above. Any questions? So I should have also mentioned that with the program, that is something you apply to, but just because you can't be a part of the program, that doesn't mean you can't take our honors courses. That's open for all students. So with the program itself, it does require programming, meetings, the mentor, the mentoring, the community service, all of those things. But anyone is eligible to take our honors course as long as you have a 3.2 GPA. And that will come up on your transcript. So when you are applying for scholarships, transferring, they will see that you did take honors courses as well as uh, part of the honors program if you apply. Uh, now, regarding the courses and the, the scheduling, um, for the semester, we only provide one section that's normally listed or emailed to you by the faculty member, uh, but our courses do fluctuate and they switch. So different faculty members, different semesters offer different times and different courses. So every semester, although this semester uh, we had history, VPA, and I'm forgetting one other one, I'm sorry, uh, and Poli Sci is the other one, it's a Latin American Studies course. Uh, next semester, they might be a bit different, but as I said, every semester they do switch based on the faculty member, their availability. And again, if there's a course that keeps coming up in the honors that it's not a time that's available for you, please email me back or the professor with a time that's prefer preferable for you so that we can consider that moving forward when we are scheduling classes. Any other questions? Yes. Yes, so we encourage part of the honors program, we encourage for students to be a part as much as they can. Because while you're on campus, there's a lot of resources here. So we're all about connecting students, not only to the program and the students in the program, but all the resources that HOSOS has to offer. And there's a lot here on campus. So getting that information is not always available to students. And us as a program, my, myself personally, I send at least six, seven emails about scholarships, about internships, about internal opportunities, programs. And like I said, we try to collaborate with other programs like SLA. Uh, Denise, who is the president, she is part of the honors program. So we always encourage our students to get involved. So being a part of the program, you do have to take a course or a contract, which I'm not going to get into too much about a contract that is an additional way to be a part of the program each semester. But to take an honors course, you do not have to be a part of the program. Mm. Sorry. Yes. Yes, 
So I don't know if you guys heard her question. She asked if she wanted to apply for the program um, and only has four classes that are set that are not offered as an honors course. The option for a student who cannot take an honors course but still wants to be a part of the program, they would take a contract, which is an agreement you would set up with the professor that you're currently enrolled for. They do have to be a full-time faculty. There's a whole bunch of language and policies with that, but there are ways to be in the program without taking an honors course. So for this semester, it is late because we have already started the semester, but if you're considering the honors program, the honors course, this would be for next semester. So you always plan, and I don't know if they've mentioned it, but you always plan for the semester ahead. So you're not, when you're looking at these programs, it's always for the next semester. So when you apply now, it'll be considered for spring semester, so February. And we conduct interviews in January, it's always the week before classes. You can have, so before we used to actually have a cutoff that you couldn't have um, any more than 30 credits joining the program, we actually had to remove that cutoff. So any student can join, whether it be their first semester or their last semester. Uh, there is a benefit of being a part of, and there is a large benefit of being in the program semester to semester, whether it be connecting with a faculty member who's your mentor to get information regarding scholarships, transfers, because that's one thing we are, is we're trying to connect you to your goals. So whatever that may be for that specific semester, we do our best to do so for you. Yes. Okay, two questions. Do you maintain a 3.0 GPA for the entire semester? Yes. 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 Do you have to be in the honors program? No, so that's separate. So what that's saying there is that we encourage students who do have a 3.5 GPA in our program to be a part of the National Honor Society, which is Phi Theta Kappa, which